In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I painted my baddon to match the cover art for the 2nd edition Chaos Codex. My name's Michael, and in this video, I want to do something a bit different. I've been involved in the Warhammer hobby for over 20 years now, and the 2nd edition 40k Codex covers have always been some of my favourite pieces of art and I think it's about time to paint some miniatures using these iconic images for inspiration and the first miniature I've chosen to paint is a Baden. The reason for this is I actually started a Black Legion army inspired by the earlier 2nd and 3rd edition colour scheme for Black Legion where they had silver trim and yellow pipes and tubes so of course I'm going to want a retro scheme for a Baden as well. So I'm sure some of you are already questioning me on how I say a Baden because I'm sure some of you say Abaddon but to me, he's a badun. He's a bad guy. So I'm just letting you know for the rest of this video, I'm going to be saying a badun. So whenever I'm trying to figure out how I want to paint something, I of course immediately go to the internet and see what I can find. So here I'm just blocking in some colours on a badun to get an overall feel for how he's going to end up looking. And I don't really have any sort of method to this and I'm not expecting this to be a work of art or a masterpiece. I just kind of want to think about what colours I want to use on a Baden. and obviously I'm going to be using the 2nd edition Chaos Codex for inspiration and reference, um, but I just want to make sure I'm happy with it and does it look good. I don't do this for everything I paint, uh, just for those bigger projects that aren't just trying to replicate how Games Workshop paint their miniatures. So. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. So now it's time to work on how I'm going to paint it and what paints I want to use. So I'll go to work trying to figure out a few things and this is where having loads of spare bits from kits comes in handy to figure out how you want to paint something. And eventually I figured it out, but we'll save that for later. Now it's time to build a baddon and figure out what sub assemblies I want. And if you want to know more about getting your miniatures ready for painting, I've got a tutorial on my channel showing you how. If you enjoy my content, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon, which I'll also link in the description. I really appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to growing the channel and allows me to keep improving the content I create for you. And I massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people as well. I would like to say a massive thank you to Reva and Mirak, who have recently become my latest supporters. It really does make a difference. Also, I want to acknowledge all those who have recently donated through Super Thanks. Your donations really help because they go towards paying for all the miniatures and the paints I need for these tutorials. So from now on, any future donators, I'll be making sure to acknowledge you in future videos. So the aim is to create sub-assemblies so you can paint details and areas without having other things in the way, making painting a lot easier and less stressful. It's also nice to be able to focus on painting certain parts without worrying about ruining what you've already done somewhere else. And when you have all your sub-assemblies ready, it's time to get them undercoated. And for a badon, I chose to undercoat him using Mechanicus Standard Grey. This lets me see all the details more easily but you can undercoat him in whatever colour works best for you. So this is going to be quite an in-depth tutorial and there's a lot to go through to get a bad and painted. So to make things easier and to make it easier to follow along with, I'm actually going to be splitting this tutorial down into different chapters. So I'll be breaking up the rest of this video in different chapters to make it easier to follow along with and I'll be showing you what paints and brushes I use along the way as I use them. Abaddon is a large miniature and is mainly armour, so I want to work on painting the gold and black armour panels first. You may be tempted to start off painting the black of the armour, but I've come to learn that painting armour trim on Chaos Miniatures isn't fun, so I like to do it first because my brain prefers it when I'm messy. So let's start with some Retributor armour to get all the trim and details we want to be gold painted, and to make sure we get a nice finish to our layers, we want to thin our paints first of all, and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. Take your time and try not to go over any area you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. Also, you'll notice our first layer didn't cover very well. 
so we want to paint multiple thin layers until we get a solid colour. This is going to stop us losing any detail on the miniature as well. So before we move on it's going to be a good idea to get all the black areas painted as well, just so we can go back and neaten up without having to worry about ruining any highlights and any of the work we may have already done. Make sure to follow the same steps as painting the gold to achieve a nice solid colour. Remember it's ok to be messy as you can use some Retributor armour to neaten up any mistakes. The next thing I'm going to do is apply Cassandora yellow to the gold because I want to get more of a yellow colour matching the codex artwork. Make sure to apply this in one even thin coat, enough to make the gold more yellow in colour. Next use some Liberator gold and we want to try and replicate the alternating gradient you see that gives the gold that shiny appearance in that very 90s way you tended to see in a lot of artwork. Now mix an equal amount of Stormhouse Silver and Liberated Gold and pick out any edges and details you want to be more prominent. We're now going to need some definition to help bring out the details. To do this let's use some Reichland Flesh Shade and apply it directly into recesses and around rivets so we don't affect the colour of the gold we've already painted. Make sure to let the shade fully dry before doing anything else. Finish the gold trim with a Stormhouse Silver highlight. With the gold trim all finished let's get the black finished and highlighted and because we're going to be doing quite a lot of it throughout this video let me show you some of the things that help me when I'm highlighting. First of all I like to have a brush I keep separate just for highlighting so I know it's up for the task and it's got a nice tip to it when I need it. I find I don't thin the paint as much either because I know we want a strong colour without having to do multiple passes like we would with layering. It's also a good idea to get into the habit of removing some of the paint from your brush on some kitchen paper as well. This is going to help give you more control and prevent those thick blobby lines we really don't want. The first highlight is going to be a chunky highlight and this wants to be quite a thick line and I'm almost using the side of my brush to get the thickness I'm after. The colour I'm using is Dark Reaper and I'm using this highlight to define the shape of the panels. Feel free to use the turnaround on Games Workshop's website for reference. And don't worry this isn't cheating, it's smart. We're now going to paint a thinner highlight using Thunderhawk Blue. Take your time and the places you want to paint this highlight is within the Dark Creeper highlight in the previous step. For some areas like edges you can make it easier by angling your brush and running it along that edge to paint the highlight. Let's now do another stage of highlighting but this time we're using the Blue Horror to highlight the edges we want to be more pronounced and noticeable. If you want to get fancy and impress your friends you can also use the Thunderhawk Blue to paint some scratches and marks on the armour giving it some texture. I find almost having no paint on your brush makes this a lot easier. So I know there are a lot of stages to highlight on Abaddon's armour but we really want to go to town with him and do as good of a job as possible and hopefully when you're done you'll really be able to see the difference. Let's finish this first section by painting all the joints on the armour which are also going to be black, so let's highlight these using different colours. For the chunky highlight let's use some Eschen Grey and then Dawnstone for a fine highlight. Using different colours to highlight black details helps separate them out from each other. I want to work on getting all the other metallic details and Abaddon painted. I use a mixture of different metal colours like Iron Hand Steel, Iron Warriors and Rune Lord Brass to pick out all the other metallic details. I then use Norn Oil, Agrax Earth Shade and Xerophon Sapia to give these areas some definition. When everything is dry, finish these details with a Stormhost Silver Highlight. Now all those details are done, I want to paint any chains on a pattern to better match the artwork with a blue tint to them. Paint the chain first of all with some Lead Belcher. Now let's use some Drakenhof Nightshade to give it that blue tint and finish the chain links by highlighting them with Stormhost Silver. I want to use this section to go through painting some of the more random details on a baden. For the loincloth, I use an equal mix of Cantor Blue and a baden Black to paint the base colour, making sure to get that solid colour. Next we want to use some Norn Oil to darken all the shallow folds and areas on the cloth. Cantor Blue can then be used to paint a chunky highlight around the edge of the cloth and on the raised areas making them easier to see. 
Now paint a fine highlight using rust grey and paint a thin line within the Cantor Blue chunky highlight. To make the cloth look more like material, we can give this some texture like we did with the armour. I'm using rust grey again and I'm concentrating more around the bottom of the cloth and along the edges painting really fine scratches. Build this up slowly until you're happy with the effect. Finish the cloth with some Earth One Grey, emphasising some of those edges and areas. Now I want to work on painting all the pipes yellow, matching the colour scheme to my Retro Black Legion Chaos Space Marines I've already done. Start with some Avalon Sunset for a base colour. This makes it easier to then paint a layer of Flash Kits Yellow. Then all you need to do is paint a fine highlight using Dawn Yellow. I'm now going to show you how to paint the shoulder pads starting with the Eye of Horus and then we'll have a look at trying to get a glowing effect with the Chaos Star. First of all use some Ephiston Red for a base colour. We're then going to work up through Wild Rider Red, Fire Dragon Bright and Flash Kits Yellow. And to make this easy I like to thin the paint more than I usually would and slowly build up the colours with an even thin coat, making sure to let each layer dry before doing another one. To help define the shape of the eye better, I use some Norn Oil around the edge and also in the centre. Dawn Yellow is then used to highlight. For the star we want to create a glow coming from it. Start with some Corn Red to paint in and around the arrows. Paint a chunky highlight now with Mephiston Red. Use this within the centre of the recessed areas as well. Fire Dragon Bright is then used as an edge highlight and when you're able to we want to again use this in the recessed detail. Finish with a spot highlight using Dawn Yellow, again don't forget those recessed areas. It's time to get Abaddon's infamous weapons painted. Let's get the Talon of Horus finished up first because this should be pretty easy. Use some Evilson Scarlet for the base colour to start. Next use some Norn Oil just around the edges in the recess. Now use some Fire Dragon Bright to add a highlight. I now want to take you through painting Drachnion, Abaddon's Demon Sword, showing you how to get those tonal gradients you see on the box. Start by painting all the little faces with blue horror, and Cantor Blue for the blade, which is going to be our mid-tone colour which we can then work with. We want to block in where we want the darker and lighter colours next. The colours I'm using are Tackless Blue and Abaddon Black, and I'm going to thin these down more than I normally would, making them more transparent. We can contrast each side against each other, so on one half the darker area sits next to the lighter area on the other half of the blade to make it more interesting. Have fun with it. To help create a smoother transition we can mix two colours together we want to blend. When you're happy with how the blade looks we can use blue horror for an edge highlight and then earth one grey for a spot highlight. For the bottom half of the sword paint this Evilson Scarlet. Then paint a chunky highlight using Wild Rider Red and finish by highlighting all the edges and raised details with Fire Dragon Bright. Next up we're going to be working on the trophy rack and all the schools. If you're collecting and painting anything chaos, you'll need to know how to paint schools and trophy racks for certain. Schools are first painted with Rakar Flesh. Next we want to use Yushabti Bone to bring out all the details and raised areas of the schools. You can use Slanish Grey for the Tyranid Skull if you wanted this to look different. Now thin down some Agrax Earthshade with an equal amount of Lamy Medium and apply this to the schools. The same thing can be done for the Tyranid Skull but use a Norn Oil instead. When the shades have dried, neaten up and lay back up to the original base colours. Highlight all the schools with Pallid Witch Flesh. The wood can be painted first of all using Steel Legion Drab. And then you shove to bone to highlight, painting thin lines to pick out all those raised edges on the wood. Paint the Space Marine Helmet in your least favourite chapter. Before we move on, I want to paint this area that will be behind Abaddon's head, even though you probably won't see it. I'll do this starting with some Cantor Blue. Techless blue is then used to paint the raised detail in areas and then blue horror is used to highlight any edges. It's time to finally paint Abaddon's head. I want to use this part of the tutorial to go through the steps to painting Abaddon's head. 
The base colour for the flesh is going to be Rakar Flesh. We then want to bring out the details of the face using an equal mix of Rakar Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh. Now it's time to start creating the all important definition with a soft shade, using Reichland Flesh Shade thinned with Lamy Medium. When that's dry you can clean off and repaint the raised areas with the Rakar Flesh and Pallid Witch Flesh mix. Highlight the flesh using Pallid Witch Flesh. The top knot is painted using Mephiston Red. Give this a wash using Norn Oil and highlight with Wild Rider Red. So Baden obviously has a lot of different black areas on him and when you find that's the case with any miniature that you're painting I do recommend painting the different black areas slightly different from each other. Not only does it help you sort of separate the different details out it just makes the miniature look more interesting. So with the Baden we've already done the black armour We've done the armor joints, the loincloth, and now I'm going to show you how to paint his top knot. Start with some Corvus Black for a base color, which is slightly lighter than a Baden Black. Paint the strands with Skaven Blight Dinge, and then do your best to highlight the strands with Dawnstone. The last thing I want to show you is how to paint the cloak. So the last thing I'm going to be doing is showing you how to paint a Baden's cloak and in my head I thought I'd be able to sort of fully build the cloak and paint it and then take it on and off a Baden um, as and when I wanted to so if I want to display it with the cloak on I'd be able to put it on and then I'd be able to sort of take it off when I wanted to do that as well but unfortunately you can't really do that so you sort of have to decide before you fully assemble him um, so for this I'm going to show you how to paint him but I won't be attaching it to a Abaddon um, just because I want a Abaddon to match the codex art better and I kind of like a Abaddon um, old school without the cloak so but just bear that in mind it is your choice it's up to you. So let's start by painting the cloak with a corn red and a Abaddon black mix as your main base colour. Using Norn Oil we want to work on darkening all the shallow areas and folds in the material. Corn Red is then used on the raised areas and folds in the material to make them more noticeable. To finish the cloak, first highlight the cloak using Rakar Flesh. And just like the loincloth we can use Rakar Flesh again to create texture by painting little scratches and lines to make it look more like material. The next detail to paint on the cloak is the fur. Start with some dryad bark. Then starting a third of the way down, you want to paint the raised details with steel legion drab, changing to painting a solid colour for the last third. You now want to highlight the fur with Rakar flesh, and change in to paint the raised detail for the last third of it. The last thing to paint is the skin, so let's start with some Cadian flesh tone, and then Kislev flesh to highlight. So the last thing to do is to glue all the parts together with some super glue. So this has been quite a big project for me and something I've been wanting to do for quite a while ever since I started the channel. But I've never really had the confidence to go ahead with it until quite recently. And I'm really glad I did because it's turned out amazingly. Um, and I've quite surprised myself with how well um, I was able to achieve what I was after. Um, and I know I didn't show you how to paint the base but with everything I've shown in the video, you should be able to paint it quite easily. Um, and you should be sort of painting it to match your Chaos Army as well. So I'm happy with it. Here's the reveal. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint a badum for yourself. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.